Many times people are very hesitant to upgrade their operating systems to a newer generation. The latest big update was Windows 10 to Windows 11. Now, I've been testing both operating systems for a long time, obviously Windows 10 a lot longer, but Windows 11 definitely had its serious issues, compatibility concerns, people buying brand new PCs, and Windows 10 saying, your PC is not eligible to upgrade because it doesn't have the right hardware. So that caused a lot of confusion, a lot of education on what people needed to do to correctly upgrade to Windows 11. And then when they did, they found that perhaps they were getting a worse performance in their games or their video editing softwares weren't compatible or working correctly. So now Windows 11 has been out for a very long time. All of my gaming PCs and you know, kind of workflow PCs are all on Windows 11 right now, except for my main one. This is the Threadripper 3970X system that I call Deep Blue. Uh, traditionally has dual 3090s, but you know, things have changed. There's 4090s out now, 4080s. Um, this is a custom water-cooled system, so it will be going through a bit of an upgrade. Uh, this was my workhorse, and because it was my workhorse, I kept Windows 10 on it for a very long time. So the question is, if you have a workstation style of PC, is it time to upgrade to Windows 11? Possibly. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to see if the performance that I'm getting in Windows 10 is actually improved by upgrading to Windows 11. Fredder for 3970X can game perfectly fine. You wouldn't buy it for gaming though, way too expensive. But it is uh, historically a huge time saver for when it comes to uh, large video editing tasks in 4K or 8K, depending on what you're doing. And of course, with a large amount of memory, this does have 128 gigs of memory, uh, you can really fit a lot in there while you're you know, doing all of your effects for video editing, especially in DaVinci Resolve. And Resolve sees multiple GPUs and utilizes them very, very nicely, mainly NVIDIA GPUs. So in this uh, scenario, I've ran a couple of benchmarks with uh, Puget, uh, and they do have specific benchmarks for uh, Photoshop, um, like a, a DaVinci Resolve, which I've ran here. So I already have a, a baseline, especially with Citibench, to see what I'm currently getting in terms of performance. And then after I install Windows 11, because it is alerting me that, hey, you're ready for Windows 11. <sighs> we'll, we'll see if I'm ready. Now, if this doesn't work out, you know, hey, all my stuff is stored on my NAS, and so I'm not gonna lose anything, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but it is time. So I'm gonna see if Windows 11 is ready for my Threadripper, and uh, we'll just go from there. So let's go through this process. After updating to Windows 11 on this Threadripper 3970X system with 128 gigabytes of RAM and the RTX 3090, we have some very interesting results with Puget Benchmark for DaVinci Resolve. Now, there's three main things that it does look at. It looks at the Fusion score that did improve slightly. So Windows 10 had 286, Windows 11, 300. Okay, slight improvement. Uh, the GPU effect score did improve kind of nicely, 158 to 175, so that's respectable. But we hit something that I did not expect, a huge dip in performance with 4K media. So this is uh, where you're doing the encoding or decoding for um, H.264. So that's very common. Most of your cell phones are doing H.264. Some are doing H.265 now. Uh, but basically that went down over 30% in performance from 201 down to 135. So I thought something just went awry in the Windows 11 update. So what I did was I uninstalled DaVinci Resolve, uh, rebooted the system, make sure everything was updated. The drivers were thoroughly updated, obviously. Uh, then, you know, reinstalled DaVinci Resolve, did another reboot, make sure everything was fine and, and updated nicely. Reran Puget Benchmarks, uh, DaVinci Resolve Benchmark a couple of times. And each time I'm getting over a 30% dip in performance compared to the Windows 10 runs. So there's obviously something going on with Windows 11 and the Threadripper 3970X. I'm not really sure what it is, but in order to give Windows 11 a fair shot, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe the system and do a fresh install because that's the next logical step. Updating an OS holds on to a lot of the old stuff that may not play well. So basically I'm going to use a fresh NVMe drive. I do have some um, 
uh, firmware updated Samsung 980 Pros. There's actually three of them in this system. So I'm gonna use one of those, take out all the other drives and uh, install Windows 11 fresh, rerun all of this after all of these software installations and driver updates and all that stuff. So I may not get it done all tonight, but uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna finish this up and then rerun this when everything is all said and done with the newest Windows 11 fresh updates and see what actually happened. So stay tuned for that. This is gonna be fun. And we're back. So yes, different clothing. Actually, take a look at this shirt. I figure it was fitting since, well, it is a fitted shirt, but uh, you know, Threadripper. So Threadripper shirt. And uh, so what has happened here? We are on a fresh install with Deep Blue for uh, Windows 11 and it does have the Threadripper 3970X, so 32 cores, 64 threads, 128 gigabytes of Kingston Fury RAM DDR4. Then there's also a Samsung 980 Pro, one terabyte in there. It's testing it because uh, the recent issues with the Samsung 980 Pros, 990 Pros, one terabytes, two terabytes, all that stuff. So wanted to see what the firmware was like, um, but I'm definitely gonna be swapping these for Kingston Renegade drives. And then um, obviously there's two GPUs in here now. There's a one 3090 and a second 3090. They're both HP Omen uh, 3090s from the 45L line and 30L line. Uh, spectacular GPUs for gaming and video editing, uh, especially with that 24 gigs of VRAM. So what has gotten us to this point? Uh, we did learn uh, what our base score was in Puget Benchmark for DaVinci Resolve. And that was actually pretty good. Um, it, it could be better. And that was, you know, stable Windows 10. The goal of this video was to see if a workstation was ready to go to Windows 11. Well, we did find out something interesting. Doing the Windows update, going from Windows 10 to Windows 11, actually had a negative result for us. So our 4K media score went from 201 down to 135. That's a huge, huge drop in performance. Our GPU effect score did go up from 158 to 175. All right, cool. And our Fusion score went up from 286 to 300. So overall, that is a reduction from a total overall score of 2150 down to 2033. That was unacceptable. So obviously I wanted to troubleshoot, try to figure out what the heck was going on and you know, just updated all the drivers, everything. You know, I don't have any bloat on my operating systems. So the next best step was to just do a clean wipe. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what I did. Before I did the clean wipe though, I was like, hey, I have a second RTX 3090 laying around, literally collecting dust. Let me put it in here and see what the Puget Bench score would be for this run for DaVinci Resolve because DaVinci Resolve is really good at improving performance with the more GPUs you actually have. It's great. You don't need NVLink or anything like that. Just keep plugging in GPUs and you get a better score. So we actually went from a 175 on the GP, uh, GPU FX score to 260. It's a huge jump. That's, that's just absolutely beautiful. And even the fusion score increased by a bit. So 300 up to 314. So that did really boost our standard overall score, you know, going from 2033 to 2433. Hey, that's great. And it did slightly increase our 4K media score, but our 4K media score was still vastly below what it was before we, when we were on Windows 10, because that was 201 points. So with that, I went ahead and did the wipe. And so here was our fix. Doing the update from Windows 10 to Windows 11, there's something wonky going on, but just completely formatting the drive, the Samsung 980 Pro NVMe drive, it's a uh, PCI Gen 4.0, so like 7,000 megs per second read speed. It's pretty fast. Um, reliability, eh, we'll see. But overall, it did improve our 4K media score doing the clean install instead of an update. So we went from 201 from Windows 10 to 206 4K media score for Windows 11 clean install. And that's what we wanted, Some, something the same or better, which was, which was good. It's a small percentage, but hey, it, we'll take it. Also, the GPU FX score did increase a bit from 250, or 158 up to 176. So it was very similar to the Windows uh, 11 update score, which is nice. Uh, but the Fusion score did jump. It went to 319 up from 286 from the Windows 10. And even uh, the Windows 
11 update procedure, that score was only 300. So a clean install gave us 319, which is nice. So overall, our score now with the clean install of Windows 11 on this Threadripper, Threadripper machine was 2,337. That's a very respectable score. So I do want to try things in the future, maybe run this again with uh, the dual GPUs now. We know the score is gonna be even higher. Uh, we have a 4090 up here. That's gonna be good. So the score is gonna go up even more. And uh, Kingston did <laughs> let me know that they have new RAM coming for me for the uh, Threadripper system. So stay tuned for that because that's gonna be pushing the limits of this Threadripper 3970X system, definitely. Uh, so to give you some context on these scores, let's run down again what some of these scores were in some of my other systems here. So you have a, a frame of reference. So an older system of mine, I call it Scorpius. It has a 12900K and an RTX 3090. Uh, it has a 4K media score of 155, GPU of 179, and Fusion score of 362. It also has a 3080 in there as well. So that's a pretty darn good score for that system. And then uh, Destro, which is kind of my more everyday system, that had a 4K media score of 222. It has a 7950X in there. GPU score of 263. And at this point in time, it's actually rocking a 4090 in this uh, benchmark and a fusion score of 433. So that's why it has such a much higher fusion score. So you can kind of equate what this fusion score would actually look like in the Threadripper system. And then lastly, one of my newer systems, I call it Fractal because it's in the Fractal Design Meshify 2 RGB case. Uh, so very creative name, right? But this has a very high score, 2,893. The 4K media score is 239. So this has a 13900K and cooling it is the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 millimeter AIO, one of the best performing AIOs around. Uh, the GPU effect score is 194. It is rocking an RTX 4080 by MSI. This is the Gaming X Trio. And then the Fusion score is 435. So that is a uh, very reflective of basically high end hardware right there. The main thing that you want to learn uh, throughout, throughout all of this is what type of hardware makes sense for your type of video editing in DaVinci Resolve. Some people do use DaVinci Resolve just for color grading. That's cool, that's fine. Some use it just for certain effects. Some use it for the whole package start to finish, like load in your video, uh, do all your cutting, your editing, your color grading, your sound manipulation, and then hit that deliver tab, render it, and you're uploading it to wherever, right? So DaVinci Resolve is, is a very, very nice suite. I do use what's called the Speed Editor, which is this beautiful device right here. Uh, this thing is, it makes you feel like you're a video DJ, basically. Uh, it's very fluid, very quick in cut, editing, transitions, uh, multicam. I love the multicam. I'm starting to use this a lot with my TikToks, oddly enough. And uh, yeah, so this is something that you can pick up for. Last I checked was about 300 bucks, but then DaVinci Resolve Studio 18 comes with it for free which is nice. So DaVinci Resolve has two different styles. The free version, which has like 95% of all the features of the paid version, but then the paid version allows you to fully take advantage of these GPUs, which is so nice. So that's about it for this uh, interesting Puget Benchmark DaVinci Resolve score benchmark video. <laughs> and uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Happy to do more of these benchmarks, swap out GPUs and all that stuff. And yeah, we have more, more, a lot more coming for Deep Blue here. So stay tuned for that. Uh, like and subscribe if you like this and feel free to share the video. I really appreciate it. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.